So picture this, you meet someone online, you instantly connect and the messages are non-stop. And then suddenly out of nowhere, they ask you for money. This type of scam is called catfishing. Catfishing is when someone pretends to be who they're not and they usually ask for money. There are huge networks of catfishers who steal people's photos, fake identities, and lure strangers online out of money. And a lot of them operate here in West Africa. People have this misconception when they think of romance scams, oh, it must be Nigerian. So no, there are a lot of scammers all over the world. They just were ahead of the game. They were the first group to actually start looking at advance fee frauds, large scale. And they were doing this before the internet anyway. Snail mail, the good old fashioned way of doing this, of conning people. And of course, then cyber cafes started emerging in about the 90s. And so they were the first ones to adapt and they took advantage of this platform. The playbook that I found was traced back to one of the Nigerian scam groups. And it was fascinating. What to say, what not to say, when to say it, what songs do you want to dedicate to the person that you're speaking with? So everything from like Celine Dion and you know, all like the classic romantic song. I've spent the past year investigating these groups, trying to understand more about their lives and why they do what they do. In Ghana, I managed to track down and speak to someone who's been active in romance scams for a number of years. Here's what he told me about the work in his business. I started without getting anything. So after a year now, a year, then I started I mean, getting just one small money. It's not easy for you to just get the money from them just straight because you have to build a trust. You feel bad, definitely. You know, it's because of work and because of money. If you have a family, you have to, I mean, take off one or two things. So I also always feel bad for that. Some romance scammers I spoke to told me this was a kind of payback for slavery. For others, it's what they see as a path from poverty towards wealth. There's issues of poor economy, there's infrastructure challenges, there's lack of legitimate jobs. You have well-educated people who just can't find work through legitimate means. And this is also a culture that really celebrates wealth. And so you have the younger folks that are looking at them as wealthy, as successful, and that, not surprisingly, makes recruitment really easy for scam networks, right? It's not just Nigeria or Ghana. You do have substantial numbers originating from Turkey, from China, from UAE, from the UK. So it's happening everywhere. So what can one do to be safe whilst dating online? For the younger generation, you know, that feels that this can't happen to them, it can. It's going to look different, but they're coming for you, right? One of the things that scammers do is they do not discriminate. When you start to connect with someone, do a reverse image search of the person's, you know, profile photos, see if they're associated with other names. Let's say you're in the love bombing stage. Try to switch things up to see how they react. If your go-to, let's say, is text messages, try phone calls, try video calls. Ask for details about their personal life. And I'm talking about beyond just the superficial stuff, right? Like I have a sister or things like that. Well, tell me more about your sister. And then go start looking this information up. Can you find the family members, let's say, on LinkedIn? When they start sort of asking you for money, how are they asking you for money? Is it a wire transfer? Is it gift cards? Right, gift cards should definitely set out red flags because how are you gonna use that to pay hospital bills? <laughs> right, like you can't do that, it doesn't compute. Don't be afraid or embarrassed to talk about the fact that you were conned. There's a shame and a stigma that is associated with being victimized by a romance scam. How could you have been stupid enough to fall for that? That's what makes victims retreat. They don't want to share their experience. They just don't want to report it. So that further complicates things when you are trying to address this, this issue.